We started off a series the Sunday before last, and we said that the enemy or the giants that you face in your life are stronger, they are mighty than you. And we ended up by saying what is going to help us overcome is courage in the Lord. And we want to pick it today we, as our second or part two of what we started. And today we are calling it trial. Facing your giants, trial. Trial. I know that you wake up one morning and it looks okay. You have wonderful breakfast. You have wonderful family and you have talked with your family. You think you're on the, f the best line. And then during the day something happens and as by the time you close into sleep, it's like everything that you did is like it all gets into the waters. And those things happen. You wake up in the morning, you have your spouse, you love each other and you you're so well and so on. By the time it closes and it comes, it's like the marriage that was is no longer there. You wake up in the morning, you have prepared your children, you take them to school to study, and in the evening, the child is not there. Many, many trials that come our way. We want to find out by the grace of God, how can I overcome some of these uh, giants we call trials. Have you ever found yourself frustrated at the person who has brought you bad news rather than trying to understand the one from whom the news originated? I want you to say that again. Have you ever found yourself frustrated at the one who brought you the bad news rather than trying to understand the one from whom the news originated? Let's lay some basis by looking at a scripture in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5 to 8. Thus says the Lord, Cast is the man who trusts in men and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhibited. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its root by the river and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaves will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought nor will cease from yielding fruit. What a powerful promise. Remember we have finished by saying, in the midst of it all, it's you that I want to see. You know, some people live in this kind of life, constant frustration, at the man who brings the bad news. I know you, because you are like me. Somebody brings news, and the news you don't like it, so you start arguing with the person, and telling the person, how bad do you feel uh, for the news that you have received? Instead of receiving it and trying to understand from where the news has originated from. And all this frustration, we can call them daily giants of our lives. And they defeat us continually. You can wake up and say, I will not do this. And for a couple of days, you don't do it. And then suddenly you find yourself again falling into the same rut that you, you had thought you overcame a little while ago. We need not to be defeated by this frustration and trials when they come to us. When it comes to us. And the book of Job, if you read the book of Job, and we will read some portions from the book of Job, you'll find out Job is like a veil is being removed. And we are given insight from the book of Job, which, which some, we find ourselves in those circumstances also in life. We see both the power of adversary and we learn from the absolute powerlessness that Job found himself and then we find the most powerful God in it. He is involved in it. Job's postmen or mailmen 
or people who carried the package to him brought news, both blessing and brokenness. And let's consider a little bit about it. Job chapter 1, verse 14 to 19. And there came a postman, a messenger, with a package unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them. When the Sabians raided them and took them away, indeed, they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, the man had not finished. Another also came and said, The fire of the Lord came from the heaven and burned up the sheep and the, sh and the sh servants and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, The Chaldeans formed three bands, raided the camels and took them away, yes, and killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness, struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people, and they are all dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. If you are Job, just think a little bit. If you are Job, somebody walks in your house and it says, The car outside has burned, it's only me who has come to tell you the story. Your only car. Or somebody runs to your office and tells you the house is in the ashes. It's only me. And before he finishes, another one comes. Your children are playing together and it's only me. Imagine for a little while, everything that Job had, everything. He woke up in the morning, he was a rich man. This is not even evening. He's a poor man. In the midst of it all. Oh, I like that song. I want to see you. And that is key for us. Because trials will come. So point number one, for you to overcome some of those things. And you know, sometimes there is, Kuna simu ukipigiwa. Huyo jama hajakuletea habari nzuri. Baka unajuliza. Nichukue leo, nisichukue. Kwa sabu, every time you pick it, there is either this or that. Kuna hii, kuna hiyo. And sometimes you, you can be offended by that person who has carried the message. But point number one, I want to encourage you and I, oh, that God is going to help us to look beyond the trials. We look beyond the man who brings the bad news. We look beyond the package that is wrapped with that bad news. We look beyond the problem. Because in it, Job saw the providence of God in the midst of it all. It's you that I want to see, Job. So, a stronger demonstration of grace could hardly be demonstrated than that which was demonstrated by Job. But consider first, who brought about the need for grace? Was it God or was it Satan? You know, friends, sometimes if we are not careful, if you don't understand the messenger, where the message has come from, you miss it. You blame people. Remember where we started if you look at men, you'll be a frustrated, a frustrated fellow. But you need to look and trust in God and God alone. In Job chapter 1, verse 6 to 12, this is what the Bible says. And there was a day when the Son of God, sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Yani nimetoka Kenya and I have come from Nairobi walking around and so on and so forth. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant? I want you to know that when God is addressing 
the devil concerning you. He calls you my servant. Have you considered my servant? Have you considered my servant? Have you considered my servant? Job. And there is none like him in the earth. A blameless, an upright man, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, that Job fear God for nothing. I think this is where the rubber touches the, low, uh, the road. When the trials are coming, the devil is trying to say, you don't love him. I'm talking to you. You don't love him for nothing. You love him because you have a good, beautiful wife. You love him because you have beautiful children. You love him because your children are this and the other. You love him because you have some cash. You love him because you have unemployment. That's what the devil likes to say. Do you love him? Regardless of what you have, do you love him? Do you, would you love him? Would you love him when everything is not right? Would you love him in the midst of this coronavirus and you have lost your job? Would you love him? Now God says, you are my servant. And he says, have you considered him? He loves me. And the devil says, do you think Jimmy Kimani loves you for nothing? And you can put your name there. Verse number 10, have you not made a hedge around him? I love this. It is the devil telling God. And I think that's what the devil tells God about you. Have you not made a hedge around him? Because God has made a hedge around you and around me. A hedge of protection. Around my household, around your household. Around us on every side. You have blessed the work of his hand and God has blessed the works of your hand. He, he, you have blessed his possessions. You have increased him in the land. Oh my goodness. That's what the devil knows about you. But now, stretch out your hand and touch all that he has. And he will surely cast you to your face. That's what the devil is telling him. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. All that he has. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. You see, one of the, the things that excites me about God giving a testimony of Job is that he knew Job, loved him, whatever the circumstance. That, can God say that about me? The, this week, all the news that I've had are not very, very good, and they are from friends. The other week, friends, burying friends, and this week, friends. Until one of them last night said, is it only us? It's just the other day we lost, the other day we lost, the other day we lost. Because that is a human nature. And you see, the point that many times we miss is to look at what God has done so that we can see him, his sovereignty in him. So I said, listen to me. Because of the sovereignty of God, a vehicle crashes and is finished. When you look at it, you even don't know where the driver was because it has been squeezed. And then somebody tells you, the driver of that car is alive today. And then you say, what? And then you see another one. It was only hit at the bumper. Hit by the bumper. And it was a Nissan. But the, there is a person who died at the boot, at the back, at the back seat. And then you wonder, the driver did not die. No, the driver didn't die, but there is a person who died. It is the sovereignty of God. But God knew about Job. He said, take everything, but leave him. Take everything and leave him. I like that. Because God knows, and the devil knows that when God blesses my hands, it doesn't matter what I have, even if it disappears, God will bless the labors of my hand, and that is his promise. Excuse me. <clears throat> God will bless the labors of a hand. Again in chapter 2, the scenario is repeated, the same scenario. After he did all that, finished all what Job had, he went back to God. Verse 4 to 9 of Job chapter 2. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. All that a man hath, 
will he give for his life? But put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will cast thee to the face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. In other words, heal, heal, heal. When the body remains, that which goes to the Lord, don't touch it, but touch the body, touch the body. And you know, the devil went down from the presence of the Lord and he did that. But Job, in the midst of it all, is all that I need. I want to see you. Verse 21 and 22 of Job chapter 1, he says, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. I shall return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now that is key. That everything that I have, I was given and it will go. I was given and it will go. The word providence is a compound word. Pro meaning before. And video meaning to see. So the word carries the idea to see beyond. May God help us to see beyond. Because Job was able to see beyond what had been delivered to him and made a connection between his circumstance and to his God. He was able to see beyond. God had given him grace to receive the blessings. And also God had given him the grace to release the blessings in the trials. May the good Lord help us. And you know, if you're not careful, if you're not looking beyond the, the, the trials, the package, the person who brings the bad news, if you don't look beyond to what God may be trying to remove in order to remove, to bring the best out of you, you will miss it. And what will happen? You'll be snapping back and being childish all the time. I know childish, you become so selfish. It is me. You have hurt me. You, I don't like you. I hate you. Is God removing your financial health to remove your longing for things? Because you see, the more the money you have, the, the love for things and things and things. Is he bringing pity trials in your life because he's seeking to remove you are oversensitiveness to people and invent. Some of us are so sensitive. Any word, you take it. And it is me. You have hurt me. You have injured my ego. Is God giving you authority to which it will be difficult? In other words, it would have been difficult without you getting to that level where you submit to him and you say, Lord, you gave. Lord, you have taken it. Look beyond the carrier of this news. If you want to overcome that trial, do like Job. He was there, but he knew God cannot do what was happening to him. His friends told him otherwise, but he knew. Point number two. Look past the delivery to the deliverer. I hope you get that. The message is bad. Look beyond the man who is bringing it to the deliverer. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, be careful for nothing. You see, you and I need to be alert all the time, being anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. This, and verse 7 says uh, this, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Look past the delivery to the deliverer. The word careful here means anxious or troubled, like we saw in the translation. How does this happen? It happens 
when we look past what has been delivered to us and we consider again the goodness of him that delivers us. COVID, I don't know whether some of you saw there was a Sunday, Sunday standard that gave the preachers that have died of COVID. Two of them were our people, our bishop and the Reverend Wambua. And you, you, you'd even think, hey, let me tell you, it is happening, it's all over the place. COVID is all over the place. But with it, we will be careful not for it, but in it, we are going to give thanks to the Lord and glorify him because we know that his peace, which passes our understanding of men, that is what we need in a time like now to govern and to guide them, uh, to, to, to keep our hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. We consider the deliverer. And this is the story of the Bible. God wisely placing in the paths of his children those things that will bring about his purpose and plan. So the trials that you're going through, God is only trying to get you to his purpose. There's a plan for God for you. You'll have a story to tell. Psalms 37 verse 23. I love this. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his ways. Good men, Christians, wherever you are, because you're a good man, even in that, some of you, maybe you're watching from wherever you are and they have said you have coronavirus. Be a good man because if you delight in God, God is going to keep your steps in him. The steps of a good man, they are ordered. May God order you, even in the situation you find yourself. The word ordered here simply means prepared. God has prepared a path for you to follow. Don't resist it. What he delivers is for us to receive, and it is for our good, even when we are in the heat of the drought. Isaiah 58 verse 11 and the Lord shall guide thee. This, this is something also for you and for me. Talking. And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. That's the promise. And you can receive that promise and make it yours in the name of the Lord. We often think that Job should have said, the Lord gave, but Satan has taken away. I know that's, that's what we, we like saying. No, 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 there must be, have been a devil. You're an African like myself. In our cultures, nobody dies. You are either bewitched or something. Even one of the presidents, somehow, when he was just about to die, he said, Wameniroga, you know, because we don't die. We don't die. We refuse. We refuse. But Job said, no. The devil gave me nothing. Therefore, the devil can take nothing. I want to speak to you. The devil gave you nothing. The devil cannot take it. If it is God who gave it, he will guide it. He will guard it and protect it. And I love that. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yet Job understood that all things come from God. God's intention for Job was good regardless of Job's circumstance. I hope you can get that. Regardless of your circumstance, God has a good plan for you. Not for evil to give you a future and a hope. When this corona will be over, we will look back and thank God. There is no question that Judas intended nothing but evil when Satan entered him and betrayed our Lord. But can there be any question that Judas, who had become the servant of Satan, was fulfilling the very plan the Almighty God had? The devil missed it. The devil missed it. The devil missed it because God had a wonderful plan. You know, we were talking with some preachers and we said, some of us were shy of television preaching, but you know what? 
Since last year, I've been on your television, I've been on your YouTube, I've been on your Facebook. You know, I, I cannot even believe it is myself. The devil meant it for evil, but God has done it for good. We are using what we would not use before. The devil has lost it again. God can and often does use our foolishness to highlight his glory. God can often does use our foolishness to highlight his glory. But he is under no obligation to do so. And we should never succumb ourselves to the wrong thinking that God made us to sin or to fall down into sin so that things can work together for good. Can you imagine there are people who quote Romans 8.28 and say, and we know. And they have fallen into sin. They missed the conclusion of verse number 8 because it says to them who are called according to his purpose. People that are called according to his purpose, they love him, they keep his commandments. And if you keep his commandment, we shall abide in his love. We know that. Hallelujah, I, like, I love this. This does not mean that we to blame God for the consequences of our sinful choices. Judah sinned and God suddenly used it to accomplish his purpose. But let me tell you, friend, if Judas repented under the same cross that he took a savior, he would have been forgiven. How many of the people are forgiven at that cross? Even the, the soldier that pierced him and water came out, he was forgiven. It's only that he did not know. Finally, and I know this is where a lot of us will have problems in our walk with the Lord. And this, and this is the whole truth. God knows exactly what package you need and when you need it. Remember where we started? I started by saying you wake up in the morning and the day looks okay, but the conclusion of that day becomes awful. And the people who give news, sometimes they make you feel like, I received some news and Boro is here. Um, the news I received when I was calling Boro was like, a house I have not very far from here was flooded. And, I, and, and so from where I was, I was asking, from which side? In Mengiria Wapi. So I was telling my wife, which, which place has this entered from? Because you cannot solve a problem until first you know where the problem is. Imeingiria wapi. Excuse me. And the help that I got last night was a help from someone who looked at the source. The deliverer of the news was bad. But you go beyond the deliverer, you look at the source. God knew the package that Job needed when he delivered the trial, pain, loss, and suffering. And God also knew what Job needed when he restored to Job twofold what he had first taken away. And more than this, Job was able to say, Job 42 verse 5, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eyes have seen you. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. That's my prayer for you. That after all these trials, you'll say, I have heard. Neither the Lord take you from the level, not of hearing, but push you to the level of seeing what God has done for you. Hallelujah. Is that not, is that not what all of us desire? We desire to have more. Than, 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 than what we had before when God restores us. Paul prayed in Philippians 3.10 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death that I may know him. I want to know him. 
And I want to know that power. Because you see, friends, the power that brought Jesus back to life, that power that rolled the stone, that power, when Paul is saying, I want to know that, I want that power to be practical to me. I want that power to work in my life. I want that power to work over the dead things that I have around me. The stone to be rolled, I want that power. I want the fellowship of his suffering. I want to walk close to him because in his suffering, life and hope, I want to be conformed into his death because if I die in Christ, I will also rise in Christ. Let me do a conclusion. Psalms 1 and verse number 3. Remember where we read in Jeremiah. We go back to this powerful quote again. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. That's what God says. What giant of trial or package or delivered to you or a postman that has brought to you and you are facing it today. What is that? What is it? Has he arrived carrying a package that you are unwilling to accept and you have kept it outside and every time you look outside you see the same package and you know it was yours but you are refusing. Maybe that package remains even today at your front door. And God is asking you to sign for it. Go for it. Open it. See what is inside. Because there is no trial that God will not make a way of escape for you. It doesn't matter where it is. God is asking you, receive it. And God wants you to look and understand the source and what it is. There is no trial that will come away that God has no way of escape for us. Gracious Heavenly Father, help me that I will not fight with the deliverer of the trials or the bad news. The giant of trials and bad news. But help me to understand That in every situation that we are in, it is not everything that happens to me that is God's hand. But help me to understand that there is nothing that happens to me behind God's back. Nothing. Not when I'm sick, not when I'm confused, not when I'm in a loss. In everything, help me to know. And understand that the deliverer, my God, is still there, ready to deliver me. Lord, deliver us from the trials that we might find ourselves in. And those that have received bad news this morning, those that have received bad news this week, and they have been contemplating and even hating the deliverer of the news, may they seek the source and know there is a deliverer who delivers us. For oh, this is my prayer, and I pray this in Jesus' name. From wherever you are listening to us, maybe you are saying, Bishop, I have this trial and that trial, and I'm asking God to deliver me. And I'll need your prayer. I'll pray also for you. But I'm also asking, maybe you are there, you are not born again. And in a time and season like this, we need a Savior. These are the hardest times that you need a savior. I was telling someone last night, let's keep calling each other because a rapture can happen to me. You call me and I'm not there. So call me when I'm there so that we can talk before it happens. Now because of that, we need to be ready. Prepare ourselves for the heaven where the Lord went to prepare a place for us. And we can do it easy. It's just simple. By saying this, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you as Lord and Savior of my heart. Forgive me my sins and write my name in the book of life that when everything has been said and done, I will know that I'm saved in the hands of the Lord. I pray this 
in Jesus' name. If you have prayed this prayer, there is a number above my head and it will come under your screen. Call that number. There will be a pastor that will be ready to pray with you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord sustain and prosper you in Jesus' name. Amen.